We had some good questions about what are the types of strikes that you do at the dojo. Now there are too many to go over, but I'm going to give you a couple today so that you can add them to your arsenal or your particular martial art. A lot of martial arts don't allow striking and kicking, such as the popular Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You cannot strike. It's against the rules. You can't kick. And there are other martial arts, such as kickboxing, that don't allow grappling or groundwork. So that's why I picked this martial art, is because it has everything as far as striking, grappling, choking throws all kinds of things weaponry that's why i picked this martial art because it seems to have everything however having said that be careful that you use legal and lawful force wherever you live in your particular state or country because you will be arrested no doubt by the attacker even if you are the moral and ethical person and you're protecting yourself or your family these scumbags can often hire a lawyer and try to get money from you even though you were doing true self-defense don't pluck someone's eyeball out because they took your parking space you have to use like violence with like violence if you want to remain out of jail and have money in your pocket so here are a couple fundamental Basic. I don't mean easy, but I mean basic strikes that we use every single day here at the dojo. We just used several of them last night in classes. First is a fudo ken. Fudo means immovable. So make a fist. A lot of people that walk in the dojo who are young and athletic and look like they know what they're doing can't even make a proper fist. Here's a quick way. Take your hand, curl your fingers tightly all the way down like you're squeezing in a stone. Put your thumb here on the middle or ring finger to lock it in. No spaces in there. You are basically striking with a fudo can, which means immovable, with the two top knuckles here. These two often don't hit the target. So if I hold my hand flat, you can see there's a space here. So you want the bone structure to be behind those two knuckles. If you're gonna strike, be careful because that's why you have to condition all the time your hands. You don't want your wrist to bend up or down when you hit. You'll pull your ligaments or break your wrist. So the idea is to keep your bone structure, shoulder, legs, torso behind it. The power in a punch comes from the feet and the hips, not the hand. This is the delivery system. Keep this straight as if you could balance a glass of water on it. So this is just a basic punch hitting the bad guy wherever you need to. Be careful. There are parts of the head that's stronger than the other. If you hit the chin, you can break your hand, but it could also knock the guy out. So punching is just a typical fudo kid left or right, jabs, crosses, and lunging is when you use your whole body behind it to knock the opponent out. Another strike quite unique to ninjutsu is called a kiten ken. Other people call it a shuto. Shuto means knife hand or blade hand. So from here, you have your fist closed, protecting yourself with a shield, and then at the last second, it opens up into this, looks like a chop. It looks like a sword or a knife, hence the name shuto. So from here, it opens up, and you're striking here with the soft fatty part of your hand. Be careful not to hit here. You'll break your wrist and don't hit up here. There's no strength here. So this is the sweet spot you're hitting with and you keep it closed. We have a molte shuto and palm down uda shuto inside and outside. To make the shuto, your hand goes here in this cupping action. Fingers are like glued or taped together. Thumb is here supporting very strongly. Don't hit like this. You'll hurt your hand and don't hit straight because these bones stick out. When you bend your hand at this 45 degree angle and you tighten it this way, this creates a little bit of padding here to strike. From here, this is fantastic for hitting the neck of the opponent. It's great for the back of the skull here. It's great for chopping up. You can go across the bridge of the nose and many other targets. The shuto is a powerful strike especially to damage people's arms and legs. Another type of strike is called shikan ken. Shikan means knuckles that are extended out. The reason why the samurai would extend their knuckles out is because they had armor that went to here. The kote and the hand plate went all the way out to here. So if you made a fist, it would be hidden by the armor and it wouldn't affect someone wearing a helmet. So they would learn to extend their knuckles out here to get a couple extra inches of reach to go under the helmet of the armor or around the crevices, the butsumetsu under the armpit, in places where armor was not protecting the opponent. So to do that fist, you do this, and you curl your fingers down here, put your thumb there and lock it in, and now you have one, two, three, four chisels. They're very sharp, and they strike this. You have to condition this. We do push-ups on these so that you can hold this fist and it doesn't hurt. Again, you want to keep this all flat behind it. This extends out. It's fantastic for striking in very narrow places, such as the throat, eyeball, under the armpits, 
a lot of places you can hit with these Shikan Ken extended knuckle fists. They're a nasty strike. Another one is called Taisho Ken. Taisho is the heel of the hand. This is fantastic if you can't make a fist or if you're a smaller person, perhaps a female, and your fists just aren't conditioned. You can hit here and have the bone structure behind it using the heel of the hand here, Taisho. This is fantastic for breaking someone's nose, hitting their teeth, hitting the chin from underneath to make the brain slosh around. It could knock someone out. So this is called Tai Shoken. Tai Shoken. It's a fantastic strike that has your whole body behind it, but it's not going to hurt your wrists. Shako Ken. Shako is a tiger claw or a claw. Think of a dragon from China or something like that. Basically a claw fist. This is for scratching for getting DNA under your fingernails, for raking the eyes and soft targets. So you can hit with the palm or hit with the heel like Taisho, and then you scratch and dig into the dirt, digging into the lips, ripping the lips, hitting the gums, scratching the eyes, the ear, pulling the hair, hitting the throat. This is basically your traditional like dragon tiger claw. It's fantastic for controlling the skull of the opponent. You hit, you grab, and you can move the skull around and take the opponent where you need them to go. Then you have your shito ken, or some people call it bo shi ken, this thumb drive here. Making a fist, squeezing the rock, and putting your thumb sticking out like that, about a quarter of an inch. It's still very much supported, and then you hold it this way like you're holding a hand grenade, striking with the tip of your thumb. We did a lot of these in black belt class last night. This is good for digging into someone's eyes or into the soft parts of their gills here, hitting under the jaw where it meets the tongue, striking into the eye, into the nostril of the opponent, up into the lips, and any type of soft area of the body. It's not designed to hit large bone structures like the shoulder, but it's really good for hitting the neck and soft places on the body. It's a very, very powerful type of projectile or bullet finger here. The weapon of Indra was called a Kongo. Kongo means like diamond, adamantine, thunderbolt. This Kongo Ken is basically a fist. Think of a giant King Kong type of ape. It is the same shape as the Fudo Ken, but instead of hitting this way, you hit down. You pound down like a great ape. Fantastic for fibrillating the heart, smashing the chest of the opponent, hitting here on the nose. This is one of those strikes where you can hit anywhere on the temple, and stomach groin, it's gonna ruin someone's day. So this is this Congo Ken, very rudimentary, but very powerful and really a thunderous thud of a strike. Hence the name Thunderbolt Fist. We have a principle called San Ken. It's an advanced striking method where instead of hitting once, you hit multiple times, very, very quick succession. So you might have a Fudo Ken punch. Maybe it misses here. Well, you come back is you hit here and you hit with the elbow and then you drive that shuto back. So I hit, hit, hit. Three strikes at once. One, two, three. You can hit the shuto either way. So this is shuki ken. Shuki is your elbow. When your fist fails, go to the second. And this in some ways is much stronger because there's bigger bone there. Everyone has giant elbows. Male or female makes no difference. Use your elbows to hit the opponent in close combat. So you hit and then you drive your elbow up breaking someone or hit the tip and the sharp part of the elbow down into the opponent wherever you need to. The Shuki Ken is a fantastic strike to follow up with a punch. You hit and then you elbow after in any direction you wish. Being attacked from behind, getting one of those in the nose is going to make them bleed and it will make their eyes sweat. So elbow Shuki Ken is a really good strike for your arsenal. And you have a Hapa. Hapa means eight leaf slap. Hapa is basically a light hand here, cupped to get some air in, breaking the eardrums of the opponent. Someone's grabbing you and you, their head is exposed, slapping in on their ears, breaking the eardrums, or just these slaps here. Can easily, the percussion of it can slap someone to the ground or deafen them in one ear or knock them out in some cases if you hit the right spot. So all of these strikes, Fudo, Shukdo, Shikan, Boshi, Taisho, Shako, Shukiken, Kongo. These are fantastic movements that I believe should be in any self-defense martial art. If you don't have striking in your art, you'll need to supplement striking and kicking into it if you want to be effective on the street.
you want to be able to escape. That's the idea of ninjutsu, is to escape from a fight, to avoid fights whenever possible. For self-protection martial arts, you want to have a large conglomerate of different types of skill sets. Striking, grappling, choking, as I said, and weaponry of all kinds. Distancing and timing is really crucial. So if I just do a ground grappling art and I'm not getting striking or kicking in, I need to find a way to add that to my training separately. We have tried rolling in jiu-jitsu outside on the ground and you were completely scraped, scratched, and bruised within about 30 seconds. Sometimes you need to strike, get distance, use your voice, and not get arrested for defending yourself. If you go on the ground and you're on top of someone, you cannot see your surroundings. They might have a person that's gonna walk up and stomp your head in or hit you with a two by four from behind. So make sure that your awareness which is, we all agree, the number one thing in martial arts is not striking, it's not grappling. It is self-awareness and awareness of your environment and the threats within it. If you're ever attacked, you're not in a sport, you're not in a ring. This is life and death self-defense. So you attack the vital parts of the body to the best of your ability and then suffer the injury after that you might have incurred on yourself. It goes without stating, we don't ever want to get in a physical confrontation because you'll be sued, you could be killed, they might have a weapon that you didn't see. So if you can stay away from violence of any kind, that is the highest level, Bob agrees, of martial arts.